Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a simple rechargeable lead acid battery. It works exactly on the same principle as a standard core battery, the only difference is that its geometry is not optimized. As a result, it has a low charge capacity and a low surge current, but it will have enough power to run this electric motor. You only need four components in order to build this battery and all of them can be obtained from household items. A lead electrode, a lead dioxide electrode, 30% concentrated sulfuric acid and a glass jar or a beaker in my case. I guess you already have a glass jar somewhere at home so for the electrodes and the sulfuric acid simply check this tutorial in which I explain how to make them from household items. Now, once you have all these ready, simply fill up the drawer or the beaker with 30% concentrated sulfuric acid, which constitutes the electrolyte, and install the lead electrode and the lead dioxide electrode on opposite sides. Make sure that the electrodes are clean, don't touch them directly with your fingers, you don't want any sort of pollution on them or in the electrolyte. And that's it, the battery is ready to be charged. In order to charge it, you need to apply a voltage slightly greater than 2 volt. I like to use an adjustable voltage supply, but if you don't have one, you can simply use two AA batteries in series, which will deliver a voltage of 3 volts. It is important to make sure that the lead dioxide electrode is connected to the positive side and the lead electrode to the negative side, otherwise they will get damaged. So here I am limiting the current to uh, 20 milliamps. You can use a greater current but uh, I like to use a small current in order to avoid to have some secondary reactions that could damage the electrolyte or the electrodes. Okay? So, okay, here I have 30 milliamps. So, while the battery is charging, let us explain what is going on. In principle, the battery is already fully charged when we insert the lead dioxide and the lead electrodes into the sulfuric acid. So, why am I charging it? Simply because things are not perfect and while I'm talking, the battery discharges via some complex reactions, even if it is not being used. But let us consider a normal discharge, like when the battery is connected to an external circuit. The electrolyte contains water molecules and the sulfuric acid is totally ionized as proton H plus and sulfate ions SO4 2 minus. The lead dioxide is the positive side of the battery, meaning that the current is flowing to the right across the external circuit and therefore the electrons are flowing to the left. This means that the lead dioxide electrode supplies electrons to the electrolyte, therefore it works as a cathode where reduction occurs. Likewise, the lead electrode takes electrons away from the electrolyte and works as an anode where oxidation occurs. Now for the cathode, there are two possible reduction processes that can occur. We can have four protons that associate with two oxygen atoms from the lead dioxide, producing two water molecules and dissolving the cathode into lead ion. The other possibility is that a sulfate ion can take the place of an oxygen atom from the lead dioxide, producing two water molecules and turning the cathode into a lead sulfate electrode. These two processes have reduction potentials of 1.46 volt and 1.69 volts, so it is the latter with the greatest reduction potential that actually takes place. For the anode, we also have two possible oxidation processes. A sulfate ion can be oxidized by turning the lead electrode into a lead sulfate electrode. Another possibility is that the lead can be dissolved into lead ions. 
these two processes have oxidation potentials of 0.356 volts and 0.126 volts. So it is the former with the greatest oxidation potential that actually takes place. We conclude that the cell's potential is 2.046 volts and that as it discharges, both electrodes turn into lead sulfate electrodes while the amount of sulfuric acid decreases and the amount of water increases. Now, once both electrodes have turned into lead sulfate, the symmetry prevents any current from spontaneously flowing in a particular direction. Thus, the battery is fully discharged. When charging it, the external circuit forces the current to flow from the right electrode to the left one, thus the electron now flows from the left to the right. As a result, the left electrode now becomes the anode where oxidation occurs, while the right electrode becomes the cathode where reduction occurs. Now, things are simpler since there is only one possibility for the reduction and for the oxidation. At the cathode, the sulfate is reduced to its ionic form, turning the electrode back into a lead electrode. At the anode, the oxygen from water molecule oxidizes the lead, turning the electrode back into lead dioxide electrode, while some sulfuric acid is being produced. When the battery is fully charged, everything is back to the initial state. All right, the battery has been charging for a few minutes, so let me turn off the power supply, disconnect it. So these are the leads of my um, electrodes. And first, let us measure the output voltage. It should be around 2 volts, which is standard for lead acid battery. Here, and we have 2.039 volts so that's the standard voltage for a lead acid battery now your car's battery 12 volt is actually made of six cells like this okay all right so uh, let us see if it can power this small motor so let me do this and get ready yeah perfect it works all right so this is how we make a lead acid battery if you like this video please give it thumbs up write a comment and i would appreciate if you can share it on your social network also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so thanks for watching